as you can see, chat, I have been a little bit busy between streams uh, trying to increase the size of our base. Again, I've mostly just extended uh, the current base that we had. Previously, we had like this uh, cube here and then this cube behind it. But uh, essentially, I've done a bit more base building and a bit of base reorganizing. So now we still have all of our machines in here. Uh, we've also moved a few of our machines over to this wall, including all of our furnaces. We've got our engineer's workbench. These chests are hopefully going to be gone by the end of today's stream. I do want to hopefully get a, a drive cage from Applied Energy 2 and hopefully move all of these items into that drive cage so that we can access everything from this ME crafting terminal that we did create at the end of the last stream and that is currently a little low on the old uh, fuel here and it's currently not working. But uh, that is hopefully also going to be something uh, that we solve in today's stream. I've then also made this kind of central area, which I think is probably where I'm going to move my crafting terminal to. I kind of want the crafting terminal just like in, embedded in the pillar here. So we'll probably look at getting that set up fairly soon. Um, over on the left, we have our coke ovens, which are still set up in the exact same way. The uh, bonsai pots have not been moved. And so they're still pumping all their wood into the storage drawers. And then all of the wood is then being pulled out of the storage drawers and over into here. We then have uh, fluid trash cans on top of both of those to delete the creosote. Eventually, we could look at storing that, uh, that creosote. But for now, I think deleting it is fine. We do have uh, maybe like 40 buckets worth of creosote uh, sitting in, uh, in tanks over in our other room. And then again, the system is basically exactly the same. We have the charcoal pumped out under and around into this drawer here. I've put another drawer over here because uh, you can pump two things, of course, into uh, the blast furnace, those two things being charcoal and iron. So uh, this drawer here is for, you know, times in the future where we maybe want to automate the production of, um, of steel. We can just pump iron into this framed storage drawer and it will automatically go into the blast furnace with the charcoal. And then, of course, all that steel uh, is then being pulled out and sent into uh, this drawer here. Uh, we do also have the slag on the front. Uh, right now, the slag is being exported to this chest, and then there is a transfer node that pumps it around uh, to the bottom. So this transfer pipe here isn't really doing anything, but uh, I've put it down basically just for the sake of symmetry. Uh, the same with this pipe here. There's a pipe uh, that kind of just goes into the floor and then goes nowhere for the iron uh, in the future. Again, mostly just there to add to the, uh, the symmetry. And hopefully these pipes will be covered up fairly soon because I do want to get uh, some blast furnace preheaters down on either side of the blast furnace here to hopefully make getting steel much, much faster. I've also gone ahead and increased the size of our smeltery. It's now uh, three by three as opposed to one by one in the middle here. So hopefully uh, we can start smelting uh, more ingots faster. And, uh, you know, for especially for things like getting plates, which we're going to need quite a few of today. Uh, hopefully this slightly bigger smeltery is going to help with that. We, of course, have the exact same setup as before with the old uh, pressure chamber here and all of the uh, accompanying items like the charging station and the UV light box, as well as that brand new safety tube there that we set up in the last stream. And I think finally, chat, all we have left really is our Batania setup, which is now uh, out back here. Nothing is new. This is all the same. It's just laid out differently. So we've still got our four mana pools. Um, I've split the end of flame. So now there's like two sets of them, one either side of uh, the mana pool here. And they're still working in the exact same way with wood coming in, uh, being crafted by an analog crafter and then being dropped onto the wooden pressure plates. So the portal, uh, we still have our Claconia here with the old uh, mechanical user there for placing down sand. And then uh, we also over here have the system we worked on in the last stream with the refinery, which is being heated up by netherrack and fire and the blazing pyrothium. Uh, currently, I've replaced the end stone with this purple stained glass. I don't know how I feel about it. It does work, surprisingly, uh, in terms of keeping the heat in the refinery. Um, I think it looks a little bit better than just having random blocks placed all around it, but uh, I'm not too sure. We might change that in the future. And then uh, to keep with the symmetry, I've moved the uh, thermoneumatic processing plant all the way over to this side of the base right here. But uh, other than that, everything is still working in the exact same way. And all of the final plastic is then pumped around. Uh, we do have a drum hiding right about there, which is uh, filling up nice and quickly on plastic. And then finally, of course, pumping that plastic around and into the plastic mixer. It is, of course, still a work in progress. You'll notice that the uh, little orchid up here is still kind of floating um, just in the middle of this kind of courtyard area. And uh, this courtyard area itself is also quite flat. I do kind of want to, uh, to work with uh, this Stygian grass and uh, maybe add some depth to it, maybe add some like uh, ponds or something, or maybe just some flowers, something like that to make it look a little bit nicer. And um, I think we're probably going to want to work on a better source of mana before we re-engage the orchid here, because whilst it has been working and whilst we have actually managed to get one diamond uh, finally from this, uh, from this orchid here, it is 
very slow with the current amount of mana that we're generating. And so I think if we're going to turn that back on, we really want to look at getting better mana generation before we do that. And I think that is also probably something for uh, for future Isaac to uh, to worry about. So I think, Chen, the first thing that I would like to do in today's stream is I would like to move this Emmy crafting terminal because, like I said, I kind of want it in that center pillar there. And you can do that using the uh, facades from Applied Energistics, and they're fairly easy to make. We do need these cable anchors, which are made with uh, basically any ingot and then a quartz cutting knife. Now, uh, we don't currently have a cutting knife, but that is fine. We should be able to make one fairly easily. And then uh, from there, we should be able to go ahead. And I guess nickel's probably not the best ingot to use, given that we really don't have that much of it. I think right now, we're only really getting nickel as uh, a byproduct from sand milling iron ore, which recently we've not been doing ever since we put auto smelt onto our, uh, our pickaxe. But uh, essentially, chat, all we have to do is we have to grab at least one purple block. And in fact, I'll grab a few here. And I'll, of course, also grab my chisel, which is hanging out over here. And if we grab the mosaic block, which is what I've used for this kind of center pillar here, what we can do is we can craft the purple block with four cable anchors. And you can do this with basically any block in the game that's not like a, an entity block. So any block that doesn't do anything, right? That does the decorative block. You can, uh, you can make into uh, facades. And I'll make a few of these. And by a few, I've cost me two because that's how many uh, two sets, because that's how many cable anchors we have. And once you have those, basically what you can do is you can uh, then embed cabling and terminals into walls. So I would prefer to make some more glass fiber cable here because I do still want to be able to connect up the terminal to the actual storage drawer here. So I think in, a, in an ideal world, I'd want to put the storage bus on the bottom of the storage drawer and then have a cable run under the floor all the way around and up to here to make it accessible. So we're going to put the Emmy storage bus right about here. We're then going to run the cable down. And then hopefully we have enough to get around and to here. We do indeed. Fantastic. And at that point, champ, we're then going to replace down our Emmy terminal over here like that. And thanks to the magic of these facades, chat, what we should be able to do is we should be able to cover up all of these cables and effectively embed the uh, the crafting terminal here into the wall. And thanks to the magic of modern Minecraft, they even continue to connect with the other textures here, which looks very nice indeed. And so now we should be able to access that from within here, assuming that uh, we continue to give everything power. Now, of course, as of right now, we would have to put the power box the energy acceptor like right about there and then maybe put like the uh, culinary generator on top of it i do plan to work on bettering our power system very shortly chat that is on the agenda for today's stream uh, so hopefully we can get rid of this i think in an ideal world obviously we'd want the energy acceptor just hidden under the ground receiving power from somewhere else um for now though this should work and should mean that we can access all of our storage draw stuff from in here we can nice good stuff good stuff all right let's fill in this uh, floor again chat there we go beautiful and then i think the first thing that we should probably work on chat today is we should probably see if we can't finish getting a couple of printed circuit boards because right now i believe we do have a, uh, a bunch and by a bunch i mean 33 unassembled pcbs and ideally chat we do want to turn these 33 unassembled pcbs into printed circuit boards and we do that by combining them in an assembler with three transistors and three capacitors each. And once we have the printed circuit boards, we can then finally use those in the pressure chamber with a simple machine chassis, a stone burnt, and an industrial die blend to make industrial machine chassis. And once we have that, we then open the doors to better machines from NRIO, all of the machines from thermal expansion, uh, and some better sources of power generation as, uh, as well. So definitely something we want to look into. If we're going to make these into printed circuit boards though. We need a lot of transistors and capacitors. They're fairly easy to make. They both require a color of plastic dye, cyan or black, as well as compressed steel and redstone. And I think working backwards, I think the very first thing we probably want to do is upgrade our blast furnace because whilst we do have a fair bit of steel, it, it is very much a bottleneck how fast the blast furnace is, right? It's a bottleneck going forward given how slow this thing is. And we can, in fact, make it faster using the uh, the preheaters, which are uh, these guys here. 
and they're really not too difficult to make. It's seven iron sheet metal and then one external heater. Uh, the iron sheet metal is just iron plates. The external heater is iron, copper, redstone, and then a copper coil block, which is iron and copper wire. The copper wire is copper wire and six. So I think what we will do, Jet, is we'll grab some iron. I think I might make like 32 iron plates because I know I'm going to need more throughout the course of today's stream. So that should begin producing iron plates. Nice. While we wait for that, let's have a look and uh, see if we can't get, Chet, the uh, the other, the external heaters. So we need two of these. I will bookmark the blast furnace preheater. So to make two external heaters, we are going to need to get quite a lot of copper wire. And again, unfortunately, the copper wire is easiest made via the use of copper plates. I'm also thinking, Chet, it might not be a bad idea for us to look at getting a, um, a metal press. This guy here. I don't think it's too difficult for us to make. Let me check the old uh, manual. So I asked Twitch chat where, or if there was anything I could make that would make me move faster. And they pointed me in the direction of the Sojourner's Sash, which I've no idea if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it doesn't seem too difficult to make. I think we do have uh, at least one of each room left. Um, also, I did forget to mention chat that between streams, I did also make the Rod of the Land, which is why we only, we only have one uh, Earth rune left. But uh, I needed the rod of the land in order to get all of the uh, the grass out here. You'll notice now there's a lot more grass. Um, I basically I made the rod of the land, which allows you to turn mana into dirt. So much like you can use the rod of the seas to place down water, uh, we can now use the rod of the land to place down dirt. And then uh, I used that to uh, create all of this uh, dirt here, which I then used with uh, the old pasture seed to get a ton of, uh, of grass. But uh, nevertheless, let's see if we can't make, chat, the, uh, the sash here. So four leather, one mana steel and then a rune of air and a rune of earth so the rune of air and the rune of earth we have leather i believe we can get from rotten flesh right with the old mana pool we can indeed and then mana steel i think we already have so basically that should be pretty much done let's see so if i do one two three four and then back over here if we do something like this so let's see if we put that into our bauble slot here we do now move faster and we also jump a little higher as well. Nice. Okay. Just a little bit of efficiency. Now that we've got a slightly larger base, being able to move around it a little bit quicker is uh, is going to be a lot nicer. I like it. It, it is going to slowly drain through our, our mana tablet at a rate that, you know, is faster than what we've been using up until now. But I think that's honestly fine. So metal press. To make the metal press, we need two steel scaffolding, one redstone engineering block, one piston, two conveyor belts, and then one heavy engineering block. None of which really seems too bad, chat. We have already made um, things like the steel scaffolding before now, and we do have a fair bit of steel lying around. We also have a redstone engineering block. We have the steel scaffolding. Did it say three? Just two, eh? So we need a piston, a conveyor belt, and a heavy machine block. I believe the heavy machine blocks are made in sets of one, they're not. They're made in sets of two. So do we have one left, or did the pump jack require two? I'm going to assume the pump jack required two. We do have a piston, though. And so basically, all that we need to actually make this is two conveyor belts, which I believe do require yet more leather, but that should be very doable. Yeah, two iron, one redstone, and three leather gets us eight conveyor belts. And then after that, it's just another heavy engineering block, which is not super cheap, but is very much so in the realm of possibility for us here. More pistons, more steel more components, and more electrum. So uh, let's go ahead and once again, throw down our culinary generator to get our A2 system back online, because that is also going to make crafting all of this stuff significantly easier. And let's see here. So first things first, let's grab three rotten flesh. And of course, go throw that into the old mana pool again. Beautiful. That should be everything that we need to make the conveyor belt. It is indeed perfect. And then from there, Chad, what are we missing here? We're missing one piston and two mechanical components. So the components do require steel uh, plates, which again, as of right now, we do not have. And I think we do need one extra piston because we also need one uh, for the actual multi-block itself. And for these guys, we are definitely going to use our workbench. So we just need four plates and two copper. That seems very doable, Chad. How much steel do we have? We have 51. Okay. Let's go and see how the smell tree is doing on our iron. It is done. Fantastic. Let's throw you in. Those are all ready to go, which is fantastic. Hopefully these are possibly the last plates that we make in the smeltering. All right. So let's go and do something like this and like this. That's going to get us four or two even. 
uh, mechanical components. And once we have those, back over here, that should be everything, chat, for the heavy engineering block. Nice. So let's go see, chat, if we can't form this multi-block. Now, I think I probably am going to set up like a basement at some point and move some of the bigger machines, like maybe the blast furnace and the coke ovens, underground, because I think they kind of look a bit out of place in these rooms like this. And I think the, uh, the metal press is also going to look a little out of place when we put it down here. But uh, for now, let's have a look. We need the two steel scaffolding with the redstone engineering block on the bottom level, then the piston and the two conveyor belts, and then the heavy engineering block. Okay, that seems very, very doable, Chet. We are going to have to rotate that, but that is fine. I'm also not sure if it matters if these point in the same direction, but just for the uh, just to be safe, we will uh, put them in the same direction. And then I believe, Chet, all we need to do then is rotate that piston, which we can do with the old hammer here. And then right click. Nice. And that gets us the old metal press. Now, um, if we're going to actually make plates with this, we do need to get a plate press, which is this guy, um, which is made with yet more steel plates. So we are going to have to make uh, five of those. And we also have to get the press mold blueprint, which is made with yet another steel plate, uh, paper and lapis. That seems doable, though. It does mean that we need six more uh, steel plates. And so uh, let's go ahead and do one, two, three, four, five and six. Throw those in. So six steel plates should be everything that we need in order to craft up, firstly, the uh, the plate blueprint. And of course, we're missing just one little bit of paper there. That is fine. Perfect. I will also grab some apples whilst I'm here as well because we are a little low on food. And then at that point, chat, we should be able to throw all of that together with some wire cutters, was it? Yes, we do need wire cutters, which thankfully, again, are fairly easy to make. Now that we have the press, if we put that on like so, we should then be able to just throw down ingots and have them fairly quickly turn into plates. Nice. Now, we can ultimate this, of course, if we put down a uh, hopper right about there. And uh, if we throw down a, a chest on the other side, uh, we can ultimate it fairly easily. And someone did point out that it's probably also worth us getting the metal press for wires so we can turn one copper ingot into two copper wire which is going to be much more efficient than turning um one copper ingot into one copper plate into one copper wire so for this it's essentially the same recipe here we need five more steel plates which now one two three four and five should be a lot quicker while we wait for that to do its thing uh, for now it is going to throw them off the edge there but that's fine let's go and grab a, uh, a chest And boom, nice. So we have the mm, steel plates. And there we go, a metal press for, uh, for wires. Nice. Okay, so that's gonna make getting, hopefully, uh, copper wires a lot easier going forward. So now back over to the preheaters chat. If we're gonna make these, we of course needed uh, all of the iron plates that we now have. Uh, we also do need to get two copper coil blocks. So we need 16 wire, which means four lots of this, which means 16 copper wire, which for us should now just be eight copper ingots. So long as we put in the, uh, the wire press, so we'll take this one out by just right uh, shift right clicking like so. And then we can uh, right-click that guy on like so. I will leave the plate press like in there just so it's, you know, ready for when I need it next time. And then if we just go quickly grab eight copper ingots and uh, we desperately very much need to get better power, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Throw them all in like so. And hopefully, chat, that's going to nice and quickly get us all of the uh, all of the coils required. And at that point, chat, I think we're pretty much good to go in terms of getting the um, the two preheaters here. We should have enough copper, iron, and redstone left to make the actual external heater. Um, I believe we have more than enough iron sheet metal uh, to make the uh, or more than enough iron plates to make the sheet metal. So uh, yeah, at that point, I think we're basically basically good. So let's go ahead and once again steal this guy, grab our copper wire. 
quickly hook this back up. Like so. And then over in here, let's see. So we want to make at least 14 sheet metal. We'll do 16. And then I believe we should have everything it takes to make 16 LV wire. We do indeed. From there, we can make two copper coal blocks. Beautiful. And finally, chat, from there we can make the two external heaters, which we can then, of course, turn into two preheaters. Nice. And these go down either side of the blast furnace, and it's kind of why there are two holes, like here and here. So I think you do want to make sure they go down the right way, which means you have to place them down facing this way, like so. And they do also require power. They take power from the top, and they do need redstone flux if they're going to, uh, to actually increase the speed at which you're uh, smelting steel. Just for reference, this is the current speed. Uh, the, the bar in the top left is actually like a better indicator there, the one that's going 16%, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. It's going up, but slowly. Now, if we, you guessed it, quickly steal our culinary generator, I'm hopeful that we can see a, um, a substantial speed upgrade. I don't think it uses a ton of power, although I could be wrong on that. I also don't know if you actually have to have both. Oh, no, you can see that going up faster already. 65, 67, 68, 70, 71, 72, 74, 75. Even with just the one that is going faster, it does seem to be using power quite quickly. And that it's like kind of losing power quite fast there now that we don't have it in. But you can see that that is now going significantly faster when this has power. So as soon as we get a more reliable source of power than the culinary generator, these are going to help us tremendously. And so that does kind of lead us, chat, into, uh, into power, right? Where are we going to go next? And that's a good question. There were a lot of options for power. Um, but people have recommended a few things. People have recommended the uh, the coal generators, like this guy here. These are very cheap and uh, probably is something that I should have made earlier. And honestly, it might not be a bad idea to get them going down now as kind of a backup source of power because you make these batteries four at a time. And then it's just a battery and a furnace makes a coal generator and we can just pump some of our planks directly into that or some of our sticks even uh, directly into that. In terms of bigger power, because of course we do still have our uh, pump jack hanging out back here, uh, which I have moved by the way, and I did do another scan uh, to make sure there is oil here, and there thankfully is. But um, if we're going to make this work, we do need like a thousand redstone flux per tick. And so I was kind of chat thinking about using the diesel generator from immersive engineering, sticking with this theme of building these big old machines. Um, there is a machine, which I think is under power wires and generators, called the diesel generator. And this guy is pretty big and pretty expensive, um, but it does produce 4,096 redstone flux per tick. And uh, the way that we can fuel it is using biofuel or bio diesel. Yeah, we can make biodiesel for immersive engineering, which is made in the refinery, which is another multi-block from immersive engineering. So you can make the biodiesel by combining ethanol and plant oil. Ethanol is made from sugarcane which we can automate, or apples, both of which we can automate with bonsai pots, and plant oil, which we can get from seeds, 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 or seeds. And any of those we could probably grow fairly easily in a, a garden cloche, which isn't really too difficult to make. So if we could get enough resources to build this, again, it's mostly just a lot of steel. You'll see quite a few heavy engineering blocks there, some radiator blocks, generator blocks, redstone engineering blocks, and fluid pipes. It's not too bad. We do, of course, also have to get the refinery, which is, again, yet more steel, yet more engineering blocks of the redstone light and heavy variety. And then we have the fermenter, which you guessed it, is more steel, more engineering blocks, some cauldrons, and some sheet metal. It looks doable, but it also looks like we probably need more steel than we have right now. So I think... I do want to do that, but I think we're going to have to hold off until we have better resource generation, because right now I don't think that we have enough iron to make enough steel to make that machine or make that setup just yet. And so what I'm thinking of doing right now, chat, is I think just to get our power, just to, to stop us from having to move the culinary generator again and again and again and again, what I think I'll do is I'll make four, I guess, of these 
coal generators, which I believe each produce 40 redstone flux per tick. So that will give us kind of a passive 160 on top of the 160 that we're already getting from our culinary generator, which we can now automate because we are about to upgrade our sag mill and alloy smelter. So they stop leaking power. And at that point, we can start running conduits around the base to give everything power from one centralized power source. I'm hoping we do have enough power here. We did have uh, 14,000 RF kind of backed up in there. It looks like we should have enough to get us through here, which is fantastic. There we go. And if we go ahead and combine that up, that gets us four small batteries, which we can then craft up with four furnaces. Right now, we seem to be completely out of furnaces, but that's fine. They are very easy for us to make. One, two, three, four. And then I guess we could even just do like that. One, two, three, four. And then at that point, Chad, all we really need to do is connect those up to our fuel. Now, the Twitch chat has reminded me that we do have the ability to transfer power wirelessly using X Utilities 2. It's not crazy good, but it should be okay for the time being because a lot of our systems don't really require that much power. So you can use the wireless RF battery and the wireless RF transmitter. The wireless RF transmitter will transfer energy from batteries to nearby blocks up to 80 redstone flux per tick. And then the wireless RF battery stores RF energy for wireless transmitters, requires RF transmitters to send energy. So it does require grid power as well. Um, but I think this might not be a terrible idea. Um, it does mean that we're going to need another resonating crystal. And I think we're probably getting to the point where we need to get another one of those anyway, because I'm fairly certain that we are running low. We might have maybe one left. Yeah, we got one shard left here. But I think we're definitely going to want to make more than one shard. Uh, do I still have the... Um, the glass cutter? The answer would appear to be no. Is it in my uh, shulker box? It is. So boom and boom. I'll make a few of these chat, I think. Just to have them. And then we can grab some, uh, some redstone here. And of course get... You know, maybe like eight of those. You know, I'll get nine just so we can uh, get rid of that last little, like, shard there that we had. So let's see. Wireless. Let's start with the battery. The battery looks very doable. We do need to get, say, a block of redstone, but that's fine. Or at least two blocks of redstone, I should say. That's very doable. And then we could also... Then we need, basically, just wireless RF transmitters for all of the machines. Yeah, it does say range four, but the range there is not how far it has to be away from the battery, the range is how far it can power nearby machines. It's pretty nifty, actually, because, for example, over here, we have a few machines. I believe that we could put this down like this, and it will power a few of these machines here. If I uh, quickly get rid of, like, this end stone, I believe that we can right-click that, and you can see the machines that it's powering, and it will power those wirelessly. It does, however, need power in the battery. So what I'm thinking, chat, is... I'm thinking of putting these coal generators down out here. It's a little janky, but we do already have this, uh, you know, setup here that's turning our planks into, uh, our, our logs into planks. And so, honestly, if we can just put down these four and have them begin, you know, taking some of the planks here and producing power, we can then pump all that power, hopefully, fairly easily into our wireless battery, which then potentially we can use to, uh, to send power to those wireless nodes and power our machines. Uh, so that does seem to be working. For whatever reason, the uh, the pipes don't seem to want to insert into the generator directly. And so we're having to go through these uh, through these hoppers as kind of the middlemen here, but it seems to be, uh, to be working. Power is being made. And uh, hopefully, chat, what we can do is we can then begin sending that power wirelessly to other machines. So for example, let's see if we can't do something over here. So if I put a thing down there, is that close enough no tiles nearby. I don't know if it can give power to these uh, preheaters. It doesn't look like it can, which is unfortunate.
What we might have to do is we might have to um, get some kind of energy storage to go on top of those preheaters to then send power into it. It's awkward though, right? Because if it doesn't work with the Ender.io machines, I'm assuming it doesn't work with the Ender.io capacitor banks. And so that only really leaves the, uh, the energy cell from thermal expansion as the option. Then again, that doesn't look too difficult to make, actually. I thought, it was, I thought this was going to require a, uh, a chassis, but it doesn't look like it's going to. Yeah, okay. So it looks like if we're going to send the power wirelessly to some of our machines, um, but we are going to have to get a few of these energy cells here, which shouldn't really be too difficult. None of this stuff is, uh, is super difficult to make. Um, again, unfortunately, we can't craft gears the old-fashioned way. Usually, you can just craft gears with like four ingots in a crafting table. Um, unless, it would seem that once again, we are going to have to get another, uh, another plate. But again, that's fine. They're not too difficult to make. So let's go get uh, five more steel plates and see if we can't make a, um, a gear press. And at that point, um, we'll look at getting a few energy cells. The idea being that the energy cells can receive the power from the wireless transmitter here and then send that power into things like the preheaters. Um, and I'm being told by the chat that the... And IO machines also don't accept power wirelessly from these little uh, wireless transmitters. You'll see if we right click here, none of the Android IO machines are getting power. So instead, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to use the wireless transmitter to send power to the energy cell, which will then power the alloy smelter and the sag mill, which should be fine. Nice. All right. So now we have the lead gears chat. I think that. The rest of the setup here shouldn't really be too difficult. We do, of course, have to move back our culinary generator. Hopefully for maybe the final time. Although that's probably wishful thinking. Time for Xnet. We don't have Xnet, right? We do have Xnet. Oh, <laughs> how the turntables. All right. So, one, two, three, four. We then are going to need some uh, redstone blocks here. Thankfully, I do believe we have maybe just enough redstone to make that work. One, two, three, four. Perfect. And then from there, we do need more lead chat, which I think is going to be the downfall of us. And we also need more electrum as well, which uh, does require a little bit more gold and silver. That isn't going to be too bad. We are going to have to go and get some more silver from the nether because we're currently out. However... Like I said, I think the downfall of us here is going to be lead, unless I have some lead ore hanging around in here that I have uh, not processed. We do. Nice. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And as always, it's definitely probably quicker if we just do this these days. Given that we have Fortune 3, we pretty much always get uh, two ingots back, and we can double those nice and quickly. Good stuff, good stuff. Uh, I am going to have to move the culinary generator again, chat, despite not wanting to move it. And we are also going to have to go and find at least one more silver if we're going to make the uh, the Electrum here. So, chat, a couple of redstone alloy ingots later. We should now be able to turn them with the Electrum into conductance coils. We'll make four. From there, we should be able to hopefully produce four energy cells. Two, three, and for each one of these can hold 2 million redstone flux and can transfer um, up to a thousand redstone flux per tick. Not that that really matters too much because the wireless transfer items, these guys down here, the wireless transmitters can only transfer 80 redstone flux per tick, which again should be fine. I think things like the uh, preheaters here each use about 32-ish RF per tick, but uh, essentially we want to make sure that uh, this is already set up correctly, but uh, orange is output and blue is input. So if we were to put down I guess another one of these, like, right here. I think we can, if we want, just put the transmitter, like, there. That should then send power to both of these guys. And thus, look at that. It's sending power to the preheaters. So, just to recap, because it's been a little all over the place. Over here, we have wood being generated by our bonsai pots. That is being sent through to the analog crafter, which is turning the logs into planks. Those planks, and then some of them are going to make mana, but some of them are now also going over uh, to produce power in the, uh, the coal generators here. That power uh, currently is not being transferred out of these three uh, coal generators. We do need to grab some conduits to actually pipe it around. Right now, it's only this one uh, that's actually doing any uh, any power generation. But this wireless battery here is storing the power, or will be in the, eventually storing the power from 
here, and then that's sending it wirelessly to these little wireless RF transmitters that are then sending power to the energy cells, and then the energy cells are putting that power into the preheater. The only reason we need the energy cells is because certain machines like the preheater, uh, like the metal press, and like the machines from Endrio don't accept the energy from the wireless transmitters natively. Hopefully most of the machines that we use going forward will have native support for the wireless transmitters and we won't have to have, you know, just a ton of energy cells around the base. But uh, if we do something like that, and again, for, for ease of use, chat, I think I'm just going to put this down like right at the top like that. It doesn't need to be on there. It could be anywhere uh, within a four block radius, but I think for now that is perfectly fine. And I think, Chad, it probably makes sense for our last one to go over here to keep our AE2 system online. Now, I'm going to hazard a guess here that AE2 also doesn't work with this. Yeah, it doesn't. But again, that's totally fine. And we can also move the energy acceptor now. It doesn't need to be over here. So I think what we will probably do is real quick chisel, uh, I guess, like one of these pieces of end stone that are just kind of on their own into the old uh, dent block here so I can put it in the floor again. Like that. And then I think for now, we'll just move the energy acceptor like over here. We'll put that down there and then, uh, you know, we'll throw down an energy cell like that and we'll put the little wireless uh, RF transmitter on top. That should put power into here. And then if we set the back there to output, uh, that should hopefully provide power to the system. Nice. So hopefully going forward, chat, finally, we will now have permanent power uh, to our applied energistic system, allowing us to always access um, all of the stuff here without having to constantly move the coronary generator again and again and again and again. Um, we do, of course, if we want to uh, actually use the end IO machines, need another, we, we would need another energy cell if we want to do that. Although I'm kind of thinking, chat, what I might do is I might just move some of these machines over into this kind of like new main central area and then run like maybe put them like over here like we've done with our Tinker's Construct parts and then just run energy conduits from the energy cell down there up and around and into the machine. Uh, yeah, before we do that though, chat, I think that it's finally time to pivot back to what I think we started doing at the start of the stream and that is making, of course, the printed circuit boards. So, printed circuit boards. If we're going to make these, we need transistors and capacitors, which is why we made the uh, preheaters so we can make steel faster. Let's go see how much steel we currently have. We are very low on iron, which is a little uh, disheartening, but we do have 125 steel. So I don't think that's quite going to be enough to make 32 printed circuit boards, but we can make some, right? Each printed circuit board requires an unassembled PCB, some solder, which is just tin and lead, as well as a transistor or three transistors and three capacitors. Three transistors is three black plastic, three compressed steel, and three redstone. So that means that uh, to turn an unassembled PCB into a printed circuit board, we need six plastic, six steel, and six redstone per PCB. Which means we can probably do like 20. Let's try and do 10, I guess. So let's try and make 30 transistors and 30 capacitors. To do that, we need 30 blank die which I think we should have the plastic to do. We might have to wait a second for the plastic to uh, move in. Like, I'm fairly certain that we do have, and what we could do, actually, I guess now, chat, is that we could put some uh, speed upgrades, or some of the speed upgrades that we're holding, into this transfer node here to pump the plastic in faster. There we go. So 20 black plastic. We also need 20, was it green plastic? Blue plastic. 20 cyan plastic. And then at that point, all we have to do is combine that up with um, redstone and compressed steel. So we are going to need 40 compressed steel, which again, should not be an issue. Now, people did ask me in the YouTube comments, or did point out, I should say, in the YouTube comments. And also, are we getting light on grid power? We're not. I can't help but notice my ring's not working. Maybe I have to do one of these. There we go. Uh, people did ask me, Isaac, why are you not using the input port for the, uh, for the pressure chamber? And uh, let me go and grab it real quick. And I'll show you why I'm not using it. The short answer is that I don't think it's very good, especially for non-automatic tasks, such as the one that we're currently doing. This guy right here, the pressure chamber interface, it does work. And um, for more automated crafts, I think it's going to be 
you know, very useful. But um, for manual, for, for little crafts like this, I think it's just quicker and easier to do it manually. So the first downside to the pressure chamber interface is that you can't put things in manually. Like you can put in an item filter, but I can't actually put items in here. You have to use some kind of hopper or uh, other device to put things in there. Um, on top of that, the main benefit of using the pressure chamber interface is to not lose pressure, but it still loses pressure. Like if I go ahead and I put some, uh, some fuel in here, which we are gonna have to grab real quick, but if I go and grab some, uh, some wood to put some fuel in there, the whole point of using, how much wormwood logs do we have? Got a stack. The whole point of using the interface is to not lose pressure. But after some testing, it does still lose pressure. So we'll do this and we'll get the pressure up just a smidge, like so. And then let's say that we wanted to, uh, we'll steal this hopper real quick. Because again, we need a hopper to actually use it. So we'll put in, let's say 40 steel. You can see the pressure's at 1.77 right now. And like, not enough pressure in the chamber to move the items. Apply more pressure to the pressure chamber. Like it did work, but you saw it lost pressure there. And it just doesn't seem worth it. Like it, it's so, like, again, I, I get the idea. I get why it exists. And I feel like it does have a, the potential to be good. Maybe with speed upgrades, maybe with, you know, automation. But for now, given how fast we can get pressure using uh, just wood and the speed upgrades we have, I feel like just doing it manually makes things, like it, it's it's very doable, right? I feel like the the interface is going to come in a lot more useful when we actually get to automation of the uh, the pressure chamber. For now, though, I think it's very much so fine if we just do something like this and then pull them out manually, right? Like that. It takes two seconds. Uh, you lose less pressure through the interface than you do through the multi-block. Yeah, but it, that the, the pressure loss of the multi-block is not worth the effort and time it takes. The, mo the, the interface is slow, right? And I can't manually place items in. I have to wait for the hopper to do it, and the hopper itself is slow, right? Like, the hopper puts items in very slowly, initially. And, like, the fact that we can make pressure so easily, pressure is just wood for us, and the fact that we can make pressure so quickly, the speed loss of using the interface, in my opinion, is not worth the wood gain when wood, for us, is free and infinite, right? That's my, that's my argument right now. That's why I'm not using it. But there we go. So we now have uh, 40 compressed steel. That should allow us to make 20 transistors and 20 capacitors. I don't know why I picked 20, because that's not a multiple of three. I feel like I really should have picked either 20, I should have picked 21 or 18. So yeah, we'll do, um, let's make two more, I guess. Compressed steel then, and we'll do 20, uh, 21 of each. So we'll start with the transistor. So we're going to do 21 black plastic, 21 compressed steel, and 21 redstone. So 21 redstone should be very doable. And I'll go ahead and just grab a stack here. So let's do 21 of you, 21 of you, and then I guess just 32 of those for now should be enough. And again, that's pretty much instantaneous. Perfect. And then once again, we'll do 21 of you, 21 of you. And again, we might as well just put all of the redstone in for now. It doesn't really make uh, too much of a difference. And there we go. There is all of the uh, transistors and all of the capacitors. Nice. So now, chat, comes the potentially rather slow part. Um, I think I probably do want to grab my speed upgrade over here again, because I'm fairly certain that the assembler is from Extra Utilities 2. The guy that's all the way back over here. It is. I mean, I'm gonna have to move this. But uh, now we need to combine the PCBs, the assemblers, uh, the PCBs, the transistors, and the capacitors with some solder. So I think what we're gonna do, Chaz, we're gonna steal these uh, energy conduits. And I think we should have maybe a few more lying around somewhere because i think you make them in sets of eight so we should have two left somewhere else 
But then I'm probably going to hook that up. Although, actually, I, mm, I don't know how much power this uses. It says 10,000 redstone flux and 10 seconds. So 1,000 redstone flux per second, which is 50 RF per tick. If that's the case, then I guess we can probably just use one of our RF transmitters. Let me give that a go. If we put this guy down like here, and we put down the old transmitter next to him, that does indeed connect. It's from the same mod, so you would hope it would. And then uh, ideally, chat, we can put in both of those, this guy, and then uh, the buckets of solder that we've been making up until now have been made like this. We use four solder powder, which is uh, a pestle and mortar with lead dust and tin powder. And then we combine that with a bucket, light it on fire, and that gets us an actual bucket of solder. It does appear that we are like completely out of both lead dust and tin dust. I think we probably do have tin dust lying around, potentially in one of these chests. Yeah, we also have lead dust as well, like a, a, rather, a rather large amount of it, more than I was uh, expecting, honestly. That is fine. We actually also have tin dust. Nice. Okay, so we should be able to uh, make that fairly easy. It's a lot easier in the smeltery, really. Oh, yes, you can combine the lead and the tin in the smeltery to make the solder. Interesting. In that case, chat, then, yeah, it probably does make a lot of sense to, first of all, uh, put a few of these items back, but then probably just move this guy, right? Like, if we pick this up and move it over here, what we can probably do fairly easily is, for now at least, just put the assembler down, like right here. It looks a little awkward, and it's definitely not permanent, but uh, that should maybe connect. That is connected. It's also connected over there, but that's, that's fine. And then, uh, yeah, if we once again put in you, you, and you, we can then drop our tin and our lead directly into here. So I assume it's uh, one to one. Ooh, 36, 36, and 125. Okay, so we need... Let's just do like four and four. One slight downside there is that we do want to... We want to make sure that we wait until it has been turned into the right alloy before we pull out. But once it has been turned into the right alloy... We can then extract that directly down into here, I would hope. We can, nice. And that's going to, slowly but surely, clearly with not enough power. I do wonder if moving this further away might help us here. Like if we put it there, so that it only connects to this guy as opposed to connecting up here as well. Then it might work faster. It's not... Uh, we still aren't making enough power there, which is unfortunate. But it is working. And it will get us the uh, the resource that we're after. So I guess, Chad, really, we can disconnect this. And we can put basically all of our... Let's do, like, 16. 10 and 16 lead. Nice. And yeah, I guess we can move the culinary generator over as well. As, uh, as chat has handily pointed out. To give it like an extra extra boost of power. We do have the speed generators, uh, the speed upgrades as well, of course. For the culinary generator. Yeah, there we go. So now we're, we are making more power than is required. And also, now that we've got eight buckets worth of solder there, we should be able to pull that out nice and easily into the old assembler there and yeah hopefully chat that's basically just printed circuit boards they are going to be pulled out into the hopper and then down into that chest there which i've just covered up with the culinary generator let me move that i guess over to the other side for now but there we go it is working finally 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 it is working and so we're now uh, <laughs> we're one step closer to the industrial machine chassis now, I don't think getting from where we are to our first industrial machine chassis is really going to be too difficult. The printed circuit boards we now have, the simple machine chassis is just iron and grains of infinity. And we did get more grains of infinity 
at the start of the stream. So we've got what it takes to make those. The stone burnt is also very doable. I did, in fact, before the stream began, uh, put in, I think, like 60 uh, polished stone into our resonator. And so we should have 60 stone burnt over here. We do indeed. Fantastic. And then the only other thing we need then, chat, is industrial dye blend, which I don't think, again, is going to be too difficult. It needs lapis powder, which is lapis through a sag mill. It needs nether quartz dust, which again is easy enough, uh, easy to do because we can duplicate another quartz using the conscious catalyst. It needs organic black dye, which you get from pulverized coal or pulverized charcoal with slime, which we can of course get from cactus. So again, fairly easy to do. And we could duplicate our coal um, using the conscious catalyst, or we could just use some of the 2048 charcoal that we have sitting above our blast furnace. So getting that shouldn't be a problem. And then the organic green dye is yet more slime balls, which for us is yet more cactus with clippings and trimmings, which you can make from dandelions, roses, all of the flowers, basically, including grass and leaves. So as long as we have bone meal and shears, as well as cactus as well. So yeah, that shouldn't be difficult at all, chat. The hard part, bizarrely for us now, is iron, because we have six. <laughs> we have six iron ingots. And so I think, chat, what we're going to have to work on in the next stream is a better source of, uh, of resource generation this is now done which is fine and we do have more uh, solder there ready for the next uh, like batch that we make but um, i think we're gonna have to make a better resource generating setup and i think for now that involves us basically um producing more mana there are a couple of options people have recommended the there we go <laughs> the gorillamus which is a flower that consumes food and produces mana uh, somebody just now reminded me of the munchdew, which is a flower that uh, consumes leaves and produces mana. Uh, we do, of course, have leaves coming in as a byproduct from our bonsai pots here. And we do have, uh, you know, 2,500 leaves sitting in this chest here. So we could use those, uh, you know, place them down and have the munchdew eat those and produce mana. Uh, there were quite a few ways that we could produce mana going forward. And uh, if we can really up our mana generation, we could then start to uh, very quickly uh, produce uh, ores using the orchid endium. And, and hopefully start to process those in a new sag mill, a new alloy smelter, smelt them up nice and fast. Um, it would mean that we'd have to get a infinite supply of end stone, which again, I think is doable using this method here. You know, we can get ender pearls using the loot fabricator, using our uh, super high tier enderman data model that we made previously. Extraterrestrial matter we can get as a byproduct of that as well. And then sandstone we can make from sand, which we can make from mana. And so it can all loop back in that way. So I think that's probably checked what we're going to work on in the next stream. We don't have a ton of power for now, but I think we are at a point now where we don't really have to worry about power too much. We've got, you know, the generators making power over here. And that does remind me that I should go ahead and do something like this, because uh, that might have actually been why we weren't producing enough power, because we were only doing 40 RF per tick, not uh, 160. Of course, each transfer node can only do uh, 80 RF per tick, but the fact that we have multiple of them uh, having more than that is going to be very useful for us. Um, but, but yeah, chat, I think that is where I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream for now. I'll be back tomorrow at 4 p.m. at BST. We'll look at getting um, some better mana up and running. We'll look at getting uh, some better resource generation up and running. Uh, we'll maybe look at getting, uh, you know, even more uh, better machines up and running. You know, we still want to get the better alloy smelter. We still want to get the better sag mill, all that kind of stuff going forward. Uh, I do want to get some garden clusters. I do want to look at getting a diesel power. And of course, I do want to look at completing this quest line and getting to the overworld. But for now, guys, as always, thank you for watching.